You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. I have a fantastic interview for you today. So I will introduce you to today's guest momentarily. Before I do so, head on over to anxietypodcast.com where you can get yourself my free five-week course. You can get my End Anxiety Toolkit. You can find out more about all sorts of interesting and wonderful things. It's a uh, loads of resources kind of centralized in one place for you. So have a look there. If you'd like to become a sponsor of the Anxiety Podcast, you can donate $1 a month. If you're a big spender, you can donate $10 a month and, and everything in between. So as I said recently, maybe give up one cup of Starbucks and put that towards the cause. Um, for that, there's a button on the website, but you can also go to patreon.com forward slash anxiety podcast. That is P-A-T-R-E-O-N forward slash anxiety podcast. You can see the other wonderful people there who are helping us out. Okay, today's guest is Justine Johnston Hemmerstead. Uh, she has a very inspiring story and she's somebody who, as she will go on to tell you, was involved in uh, a car crash, a car accident that left her with a severe brain injury, put her in a coma. Um, they thought she was paralyzed. They thought she wouldn't recover. And she's going to tell us her story of how she, you know, anxiety and fear was part of that, but more kind of an overarching story of overcoming adversity, of continuing to do the, the difficult work, and then of finding something which inspired her to continue. And now, as a, as a result, inspires other people who are going through a, a similar tough time. And her story is just amazing, as you'll come on to hear. Um, she's currently studying for her master's. Um, so she's just a, a, a huge inspiration to coming back from a difficult conversation. She's had seven children. Um, she's written books that have been published on Amazon and just loads of very cool stuff coming up in this one. But one of the main things I took away is just her ability to, to keep trying and to keep striving and to keep looking for something more and uh through the creative outlets she has she's done that which is just fantastic so without further ado let's bring on justine here we go okay so justine johnston hemmerstead welcome to the anxiety podcast thank you very much yeah glad that you could be here excited to hear a bit more about your story and and kind of uh, get into things, uh, and obviously then we'll get on to talking about your book. But maybe at the outset, you could just kind of tell us a bit about your story, because you've got quite a, an interesting story. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, when I was 19, my husband and I were married for three months. I was coming home from work one evening, and um, the sun was just starting to set, and I they think that maybe that was a factor, but I was just pulling out of the driveway or the parking lot of the mall where I worked, and a city bus broadsided my car. And um, I was resuscitated, and, um, and I had a brain injury, a severe brain injury, and I was in a coma. And I was I was even paralyzed. They said I was paralyzed. They said they were talking about turning the machines off. And but I I I woke up after three days. And but but I was I was so brain injured that it that it just was a was a hard thing. So. Hmm. No doubt. And and how long did uh, your sort of rehabilitation take from from the accident to to you kind of going home again uh well till i went home i think i stayed in the in the hospital for about three weeks and it was just kind of necessity that i had to come home i don't think we could afford the bill anymore we were just starting out and um this was before the everybody knew about the medicaid and medicare and stuff like that so i was home but um but I was just, I was, I did not want to be in the wheelchair and, and I was just, I kept reading was the, was the main thing that I did. And, and I, I think I had even started to write a little bit. And then, um, 
doing that, I just, I, I just felt that I could walk. And so I just started to hang on to furniture and walk around. And eventually I was able to walk on my own. And it's just gotten, it, it just, it, it took several months to get better until I could walk regularly again. And then, and then it's just, it's taken 20 years to, to, um, my my strength is still really weak, but I I exercise a lot now. I do the elliptical um, for a couple hours a day, mm. and that that really helps. That helps my strength and stamina and everything. So, but but that's not just for exercise for me. That's still physical therapy. Right. So it's kind of two yeah. two in one. Yeah. 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 And you have seven kids, right? Yes, I do. We we when um. We were, I was recovering in San Diego. And for about a year and a half, we moved to Iowa. And when we were in Iowa, I we we had our first child just within the first year, and then we eventually had seven. So, and and my youngest is eight years old right now, and my oldest is twenty four. How do you remember all their names? <laughs> <laughs> That's hard. I have to have my husband take care of that when we're at a restaurant or something, and they it's it, it the price is according to their ages. He has to take over. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. That's an yeah. expensive restaurant bill. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, as part of your story, um, I understand that you kind of suffered with some severe. PTSD. So was that kind of flashbacks of the incident or just as a result of your brain injury? What can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, it's, 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 there's so much fear in it. Um, it, I don't think I had so much of flashbacks that I had just, just overall fear just when, um, my eyesight, so it all results from my injury because my eyesight was, uh, just not not well. My eyes wouldn't focus. And so when I was trying to find somebody, or even to this day when I try to find somebody and they're in a crowd, I can't see them. I just can't focus on them. And then I get real fearful and real nervous about it, and then I just I feel lost. And that happens all the time. Like it used to be terrible. It still happens. But that was a really, really horrible thing. There was one time I went into a public restroom in the mall, and I couldn't find my way out. I just, I was just completely lost and disoriented, and because, and that's a result of the brain injury. So I just had to kind of stand there and wait for somebody to find me. And eventually, this, this was when my oldest daughter was probably about twelve. She had to come in to find me. So that's. It, it just makes me for a world lost. And yeah. Then, I, uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was going to say, and, and um, even when she was about 22, I think it was, when she was at her deployment party, we were at a hotel where they were celebrating. And um, and I left to go to the restroom, and I, I got lost on my way back. I couldn't remember. I couldn't figure out where they were. I couldn't see people because everybody was in a crowd. So I had to sit down and wait for her to come get me again. So that that's a that's a source of stress. So how do Even you Yeah, how do you deal with that kind of um disorienting feeling when you're in it? Do you just know that if you wait long enough it'll pass or what what do you tell yourself in those moments? Well, I just when I when I did that, when I because it's it's just real. Um, I get it's such a loss. So when I um, when I just sit down and I just feel assured that somebody will come get me, somebody will find me. But it's just it's such a loss, and there's really not much I can do in in that moment except for just sit down and wait for somebody to come find me. And. It's it's just such a loss. But then afterward, to calm down afterward, I can write. Writing really helps afterward. But that's but in the moment, it's just I just have to wait. Mm. 
So tell us a bit about your writing then. How did that, how did that, were you a writer before your accident? Was it something that you found therapeutic no. sort of after the fact? Yeah, I, I wasn't writing before. It was just afterward. It, it, I started to journal in the beginning. And then after we moved to Iowa, I started to write stories. And um, it was just really therapeutic, just the, just the, methodical nature of writing and then um it helped kind of free my mind up to 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 think and to be freer and to be free of of all of the stress that i was under and um and doing the research uh just reading through things and reading through the research and and focusing on it it really helped me to focus and um like for for my for visions of a dream, I researched all the different religions, the world religions that Alexander the Great went through, and um, in those religions, it was just it was really really calming, and that that's kind of what I was looking for was something that was just gonna calm me and kind of alleviate the the worry and the stress of everything. A feeling lost in it, and it just it, it really helped me to recover in that it was so calming. So I I kept writing, and um and also later I also went went back to college through through the internet, which um which was really helpful. That was really calming too. Just the study and the focus. The focus was what helped. Yeah, I mean, and so. What part of you kind of realized that the the writing was going to make a difference? Because I'm I'm guessing you know some people would just sit there and say, well, I've got a you know brain injury. That's kind of that's it. I'm just going to watch TV kind of yeah. thing. Like, how do yeah. you? What yeah. made you want to kind of do something? Well, I I think it was just it was just really internal. It was just. It was I. I don't want to. I don't want to be be this anymore. I don't want to be um, here anymore. So it was more of a necessity kind of a thing. It was I've got to do something in order to to cope. And and writing helped me do that. The more I wrote, the more that that I would feel kind of normal. And then it, but. At times, I would get kind of obsessive about it. I wouldn't stop writing. I'd write through the night, and I would just, I just, I didn't know how to stop. I just, I would keep writing and keep writing, and, but it just, it was so, it was, it was so calming, and it was so normalizing is the word I'm looking for, and, um, and the research that I did in order to write was, was also the the just the learning and the filling my mind with things and the focus on different things was really helpful. And I I've, I've probably written about 12 books just in recovery but none of them really survived but that's how much I was writing. So Wow. So it was kind of like a a release for you to I guess it's kind of reconnecting to your mind and allowing you to Yeah. To, to kind of have something to focus on as well, right? Yes, yes. The the focus and the the it was really equalizing, and it was just it it brought me because my mind was kind of a jumble, and I felt kind of like I was going in all different directions, and I I couldn't focus. I think it was part of my brain injury where my mind would just go in a bunch of different directions. And I couldn't focus. And what writing did was just really put me on on a road where I could just I could see where I was going, and I could have some kind of a control over how I got there. When when I learned more about the subject that I was writing about, um, it 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 felt it felt like it was opening up a whole different spectrum for me a whole different spectrum of myself as I was learning about myself through because um when I was writing about Alexander the Great <laughs> excuse me there was there I recognized so much of of his perseverance and I recognized that in myself <laughs> and then um 
And, and, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm sorry. That's all right. You're talking about Alexander the Great and kind of connecting to his, his story, I think. Yes, yes. And, um, yeah. And I just, I felt so in tune with that. And, Mm. and, um, and when I, when, when you have a, a brain injury, you're kind of, you lose your personality. Yeah. And that, that was a source of stress for me in itself because everybody expected me to be how I was. And I wasn't, I didn't even know who I was anymore because you just kind of lose everything. And, um, and so there were things that I admired in Alexander. There were things that were like his, um, his perseverance and his spirituality and, and his openness and his acceptance that I would admire those things. And I could, and I could, I, I felt like the more I admired, I admired those things, the more they strengthened me. So that's another thing that writing did was it, it helped me to, while I was learning about him more, it helped me to integrate the things that I was learning about him into myself that I admired. And that, that really strengthened me. And um, Absolutely. it just, yeah, it gave me more confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you've got, I mean, if you can't, um, if you can't trust your own self, if you can't trust your own thoughts, then rebuilding confidence has got to be a huge part of it, right? You've got to kind of learn to get that belief back. Yeah. 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 And I think that's what, um, that's what writing did was it would, it would help me to trust my own thoughts because I would, when I was learning about his story through his own words, I would learn about his story because they've got his speeches recorded in, in, um, an ancient source called Arian. And, through that, that was like a, a window into what strengthened him and who he was. And, um, and it was so much of the spirituality. And, um, I would open that up and research that and, uh, just really sift around it. And learning those things gave me a lot of confidence. And it, it just, it put, it felt me, it, it made me feel like I was focusing. Yeah, and uh, so I got a question for you, I suppose, is somebody who's recently gone through this sort of uh, injury of late, how, what kind of advice would you give to them? Um, I, oh, goodness, I would, I would really hope that they could start to find something that would help to equalize them, like writing did for me, and it, it helped to calm me. The biggest thing, because I was so full of stress and anxiety that, that I think that when I wrote, I felt calm and I felt like I was, I could do something and I felt like I was recovering and, um, just being able to having something that I could do really well. It gave me a sense of purpose. And even if I wasn't doing it well to somebody else, I, I just, the, the knowing, just knowing that I could do it because I wasn't even able to hold the pen in the beginning. So just knowing that I could do it made me feel like I could do it well. And it gave me a confidence. It was a sense of purpose. It was something like, this is what I can do. And I think that that's, that's so important just to have that, that sense of purpose and that focus in order to, to see, to see what's in front of you, to see what can be attained and to see where you can go and to see um, where you would like to go. And that, that was helpful. And then um, learning about, just learning about other cultures and how in, inclusive he was and everything. And that helped me to integrate that in my life. And the more I learned about different religions and the more I would integrate um, prayer and religion into my own life, that it would just it would be a variety for me because I was learning about all these all these ancient religions, but that was really focusing and that was really calming, and I think that gave me a sense of confidence too, was to be able to think that I could I could learn this and that I could go so deep into these religions and I could really understand them, and um and I could learn from them and I could I could centralize myself in prayer. 
and that was really calming. So there, those those were the main things for me. Was and sometimes I could I could work through them both at the same time. So I could have writing prayers, and that helped. That was a big help. So I just think it's it's it was so important in my case to be able to write out everything and write out all of my all of my fears and and all of my um all of my my hope and my um sense of purpose through writing helped. So that would, that would probably be the advice I would give somebody. Find yeah, and I, think, I was going to say that's probably why journaling works so well for people because they kind of get in the stuff out yes. of their minds and onto yes. paper, right? That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I started too, is journaling. So, oh, yeah. um, Tell us a bit about some of the books you've written, because I know some of the things you've written are on Amazon.com. I know um, you contributed to a book called uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul, Recovering from Traumatic Brain Injuries. So can you tell us a yeah. bit about those? Yeah, my my personal recovery story is in the Chicken Soup for the Soul book, and that's that's got a lot of brain injury recovery stories in it. And mine is titled Writing, because I, I my main focus in, in that piece was to say how much writing helped me and and just having that focus how much that helped and um another one of my books is called truth be told and that's a novella and um that's kind of my recovery story from brain injury but it's it's got a lot of the my fears in it and it's got it in a fictional story so it it's 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 how I saw my fears almost in a way, and how the the difficulty of recovery was, but it's in a fictional story, so um, it's it's a little bit different. But it, that was really that was a therapeutic story to write. That was very therapeutic. And then um, my my Alexander story, um, visions of a dream, and that's a, that's on Amazon.com. So, and then, and I'm also, um, I've gotten my BLS degree from the University of Iowa, and I'm currently working on my master's degree in literature through Northern Arizona University, and that, that's been a huge thing for me. So, having that sense of accomplishment while at the same time, going through the the research and the work that it took all the writing that really helped and if people want to find out more about your story is that do you have a website that people can look at as well well it's it's mostly amazon.com and um under justine hemestead h-e-m-m-e-s-t-a-d or else justine johnston hemestead there i have an author's page on there also so Perfect. So there's a lot, lot more information there. Well, I would like to say yeah. thank you so much for, for coming on and, and sharing your story. I think it's uh, super brave of you to, to really oh, thank you. take on the challenge of writing and creating something and, and sharing your story for other people who are maybe more recently going through this stuff and need somebody yeah. to kind of look to. Yeah, my, my hope is that. Yeah. Thank you Absolutely. very much. Well, you, by being on here, you're already doing it, so... Well, thank you very much. Yeah. All right, Justine, thanks very much for your time. Okay, thank you so much. There you have it. That was Justine and her great story. Um, Yeah, just inspiring stuff, like I said, right? If you've enjoyed today's show, then please come and join our Facebook group. Um, There's a button on the front page of the website. You can join the Facebook group, ask questions, get answers, all that kind of jazz. If you've also enjoyed the show, you can go to um, iTunes, uh, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, wherever you listen to this, and leave a lovely review for us. Um, that makes a big difference. It makes you feel good. It makes me feel good. And it makes more people find the show. So everybody wins. There's no downside to this. Just do it now, man. Take your 60 seconds. Thank you. I appreciate it. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, Go to the anxietypodcast.com.